So if anybody else comes in the door, it's fine. You know, um, I'll probably not call them out, but feel free to if you want to. Um, welcome to creating a custom packages. Um, this may be really quick. We'll see. You know, but uh, um, we'll, I'm. Uh, I welcome you all coming up here. I do have a blog post on this, which I will post a link to, um, which is the basis of this. And this is all based off of a, um, a actual project we've done at Four Kitchens. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that in here in a minute. If y'all haven't seen me before, which I know it's been a while, COVID's wiped a lot of our brains. Um, I go by the alias General Redneck. I come up here and talk for the people who have accents because one of my first encounters as a web developer, my first interview, it ended with this question. So you sound like a good old country boy. What brings you to the web development? And I was a little bit held up front. Um, I am a good old country boy, but I'm also a web developer. I specialize in DevOps, automated testing, and continuous integration. Um, I was a head over a QA department in a previous lifetime. I am now currently the senior support lead at Four Kitchens. I am a team lead, a technical lead, so I manage projects as well. And I am an extremely uh, uh, heavy back-end developer. This is how you can get hold of me. I um, also do a couple of my hobbies. I'm a homesteader, like to fish. Um, some of my clients are like agriculture.com and the SDSU Extension Office. Um, so agriculture is a thing that I do quite a bit too. Four, yeah, no lie, no <laughs> lie. Um, so I work with Four Kitchens. I have to do this spill because I want to, because I want to share our values with y'all. But we do build digital content platforms design systems. You might have heard of Emulsify, you know, and uh, a couple of, uh, um, we do big build app. We build big apps for ambitious organizations and we're hiring. So if any of y'all are looking for a change of pace, you know, come see me. I, uh, I really, uh, it'd be really nice to work with, with y'all. So Let's, I like to start off my presentations with what is it y'all are looking for out of this presentation? Out of this presentation, why are you here? Why do you? What do you want to hear? Why go through all the trouble of setting up a customer? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely get to that here in a minute. Anything else? Cool. What's, well, what's the advantage other than just customization? Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that too. Cool, you know that and that. <laughs> and actually, the client this was for is on Pantheon. So you know, <laughs> shouting out to Pantheon. There we go. All right. So this is what I'm what I'll talk about today. And the reason I ask you those questions is to see if we're in line and if I need to make a shift. And I I will if we if if what I'm presenting today does not match your expectations. But I want to tell you a little bit about the motivation why, t why we used a custom packages as opposed to something like private packages from packages.com. I'll tell you about the ingredients on how to do this yourself if you want to. Have a really good heart to heart with Satis. Um, a little bit about the hosting situation and give you a little bit of insight into the automation and building. I have all this open sourced and I'll have links to all the code that's written here after the presentation. So the motivation, I have one client where we work in a um, uh, what is it? team augmentation mode and they, they have this, uh, they have a very kind of frugal mindset um, and they have lots and lots of systems already. Let's name a couple of them, GitHub, uh, AWS, and like uh, on top of AWS, you know, like since they store a lot of their stuff in S3, they have Cloudflare and a couple other things in front of their Pantheon instance. And they have, right now, the ones I maintain, 20 different sites. 
It has an upstream, which is not like your Pantheon upstream. It's a set of functionality that's in that's more like a distributed profile than it is a you know like an upstream in the Pantheon sense of the word. And then there's also several other custom modules. All in all, it comes up to be 11 custom packages. So these are like JavaScript, you know, distribution downloads of zip files and stuff. Um, you know, like drop zone, etc. And then for your Drupal libraries, and then 11 BCS entries for their various different custom modules. They're on these 20 sites that are mostly the same with customizations. So they couldn't use a multi-site inst instance, and also they didn't want to for uh, Pantheon hosting costs, because you hit that one account with all that traffic, and then you buy traffic, your costs go way, way up. So they had to split it out amongst several different sites. So we have more, we have 20 different code bases just for the sites, plus all the modules, the ND, and uh, the upstream and stuff. Um, they wanted this to all be private also. They didn't necessarily want to open source their business logic behind how they create uh, a particular layout for all their custom blocks and stuff. So we, we wanted to keep that behind. Is it still in a private GitHub? You know, private comp uh, private packages you can do this with. That's that's fine. Um, but also, um, we didn't want to do all the maintenance in all the various composer.json files. So that's the reason for doing a private packages, whether it be on uh, packages.com or the custom way I'm going to show you right now, um, is you update one composer file as opposed or one entry. For, for packages as opposed to having to go through and say you want to move drop zone from 3.31 to 3.32 because you have a security upgrade or something in that library. So you have to go edit all the various sites. Um, it's much easier just to do, you know, have an automated tool or something to do a composer update in that situation as opposed to manually changing files. So that's, that's kind of where we were. Um, and we had all the ingredients to do this on hand, and it didn't add any extra uh, authentication needs. It's like if we would have had to have a private packagist, um, then we'd have to manage users over there separately. Who can maintain this private packagist? You know, um, this one, anybody who has GitHub access does. And we have a GitHub organization. Um, and then they needed to keep these private as well. They wanted the packages private too. For some reason, they don't want to want you to be able to see the the Git repository URL or any of the commit hashes or anything. It's just they, they want to keep that all behind closed doors. So, um, I looked into some of the stuff that we got uh, that I'll talk, tell you about. Blech. Some of the ingredients. But first, let's talk about the workflows. Some things you need to talk need to uh, consider whenever you're coming up and doing this is uh, how do you want to manage accountability and how easy do you want to make this? Um, even with SATIS, there's a couple of different ways for you to manage the way your uh, composer, uh, how uh, manage your packages and how it's built. Do you want to do it on the fly? Like yeah, you let, um, you give it open realm, you know, like uh, due to poor man's and some security people are totally going to cringe when I make, whenever I talk about some of these solutions. But like, let's say HTT, HTTP auth or something like that in front of a installation where you can go in there just like you do on packages.org and type in, you know, all like the URL string to the repo and give it a name, something like that. And, it, um, and that does, and it changes everything on the fly. Do you want to do that workflow, or do you want to be, you know, hold people accountable for their changes and do it through like a Git checkout system? You know, I went with the Git checkout system because I want to know that the developer that did the thing tested that the package worked before they go and break the entire packagist. 
but you know you can do it on the fly if you want to that's up to you um, so this this the implementation I'm going to show today is a little opinionated in that sense um, how instant do you need the changes to be and you can have someone it's like this comparison do you change the implementation on live well then it's content it makes sense right uh, on a live on a live website or do you change it through code how instant do you want that change to be you know um, and then uh, are you okay with timing delays like do you need the package to the packages to be always the most up-to-date thing you know when somebody does a get push to another repository um, do you want that version the dev version so let's say I push up a uh, branch um, Asheville talk do I want dev Asheville talk that version to be available instantaneously or near instantaneously or are you okay with the timing being you know a few minutes off private packages like packages.com uh, will get you pretty close to instantaneous because it's just like packages.org it's constantly polling uh, or you can set up with webhook whichever way you want to do it and then you'll be able to get those get that information really quickly whereas if you use the solution I'm showing you today there's a little bit of turnaround because you have to spin up containers and stuff like that for it to so there's a little lag minutes but not you know not not nearly as fast I just I'm giving you full disclosure on on the pros and cons uh, I'm I'm probably trying to sell you on just go to packages.com and get this solution but if you really want to do this for yourself and you're like behind a firewall or something of that nature and you really need it to be localized um, this is a solution that you can make happen so the ingredients here are status which is a rudimentary uh, static packages generator um, think static site generator okay um, that's basically what we're going to be using here uh, a repository to house the custom dependencies so you, something so that we can manage uh, status with a place to host the uh, JSON files and HTML that will be our packages so anything that's web accessible and I know again security people are going to be sitting here like well you're, you're telling people to use an FTP server I mean, it the security is up to you you know I'm making the suggestion that if you want something cheap here um, you can make it happen it can be a hosting gear account it could be a spare droplet that you throw this on because we're just files we're serving JSON files that's all this packages is and then something to build the packages on uh, uh, something something to build the packages when a dependency is updated so this is where the automation and building comes in so in this case you can use like github actions circle ci you want to go poor man you can have somebody sitting there pressing mon the the monkey button or you can have it on a cron um, through a script these are all different ways that you can make this happen the whole point of it is is getting the json files up to date on your hosting situation so let's talk about sas for a second like i said think static uh, static site generator um, you need to we already went through this where you need to decide how to host and change files and we need to set up status um, you might use a project out there called satisfy it gives you a nice little symphony GUI in front of it so that your developers can go in there and type in the package name and all that jazz without having to change any code it keeps it stored in a little in a database in the background um, so changes happen on the fly you know that, that way you don't have to go through the whole checking in checking you know checking in changes and stuff like that depends on your workflow I I didn't go that way do you want to test before deploying that's a good question so let's kind of let's get to implementing this thing I know I've I've talked a lot I talk a lot generally but I've talked a lot about things you're probably wondering like okay when are we actually going to do this thing you know you've talked to you you've you said some questionable things let's uh let, let's get a proof of concept out there okay first I want to let you know this isn't going to be a presentation coded solution here 
where I want to show you some things here, some of the steps, and we'll actually do the, uh, do do some of these. So in this case, for me to set up Satis, I created a new repository. I run Composer a niche on uh, on this uh, on this repository. I did a Composer require Composer Satis. I added a little script to my composer.json file. I did some, I did some uh, little magic of making some directories. Added a git ignore so that people wouldn't be pushing up their whole generated packages to the status, uh, status uh, repository. And then I created the status.json, which you'll see when we get in there, looks a lot like your composer.json whenever you, you're working on a normal site. And then I added a require all so that it would uh, um, so that it would uh, go and get all of the um, all the branches and things for each of the VCS uh, um, and and some of their dependencies and stuff. So that's where we are. This is kind of what it looks like. That's a lot to keep in to take in on a white screen with black text, but I'll kind of give you a couple of pointers. Access to private repos are managed by your local local composer setup, or if you do like our friend over here did, and you put it all in a nice little Dockerized container, you can ship it that way, you know. So everybody has their own, you know, doesn't have to don't have to share their own access, or you don't have to worry about your local access. Um, but if you're doing this locally, it's going to be dependent upon your access and what access you have. Um, so your SSH key is going to have to have access to those private repos if you want to build it locally. Um, in the case of CircleCI, I use a bot user. That bot user have to, has access. We store those credentials in one password and ta-da! You know, um, certain people have can can change and look at that, but you know you can use one password to do things like share SSH keys, and they're not even on the user's machine anymore. That kind of thing. Um, and revoke people's access to one password so that they, you know, don't have access to those keys anywhere. And then this is the other part. Yes, I use Lando. It's really fast. It's really cheap. I have a Linux machine. I have no problem with it. So there we go. It's really quick. It's just a little limp server here. And, yep. And then we... Uh, I have a little git ignore here, and this is my whole start script. So let's let's go take a look at that. So most of you are probably cringing on the code on white background. I did that for your sake because um, it's hard to see black, you know, color on black in a in a projector, in my opinion. So the people watching on the computer screen, I'm sorry. This is just the way it's going to be. Um, so I have four different things here in, in my left-hand bar. Um, there's a, I'm, I'm representing, the, what we're going to be looking at right now is just my SADIS implementation. But the other things I have here are my, my hosting situation, a website that implements the custom packages, and a repository that is one of the um, uh, one of the modules that I'm going to be sharing in my packages. Um, yes, I do karaoke. Yes, karaoke.generalredneck.com is a real thing. Um, the, the SSL is expired on it right now, just FYI. It's been a little while. But um, I contribute to another project called OpenKJ. Um, it's an open source karaoke system, and I've built a way for you to send your um, requests from a Drupal website to the karaoke system. So just, I want to put that plug in there. You know, that's fun. I, I really enjoy that project. But let's, let me get back on topic. Um, Composer.json, told you it was really simple. This is it, okay? I include Composer status. Then I also have this little build script. So I, do, I can do composer run build, and then it runs my status command with that I need. You can go to vendor bin status, do a help and it'll show, or list, and it'll show you all the commands. 
what I did here was one, the command is build, I told it what file to use, which it'll do status by default, and I told it what, what directory I want to put the packages in, the, the JSON files that it generates. So, if we take a look at status.json, this looks a lot like a composer.json, doesn't it? I have my name for the, pack, for the package, which doesn't really matter, but if you don't put one in there, composer, when it does the build, with status complains that there's no name, so we put a name in there. I put the home page because that's going to be part of our static site that we that we generate, and then here's the repository section. You'll notice this repository section looks a lot like all the repository sections you've probably put in your Drupal website before. Um, we've got drop zone. I've actually got two different versions of drop zone because we had it work on some implementations and not the other. So hey, look at that. Um, we have you know, like a, a CK editor plugin. I use the I use the vendor Drupal library because it makes it easier with installers. I, mean, I just that's you know I know what it is at that point, and there's no um, name collisions that we have. You know, and so you'll see all those. And then down here at the bottom, um, I've got this like uh, I've got uh, I'm going to add a um, a new package to this. Um, and that's really simple. Double check. Uh, so I'm going to go to my um, to my site over here. Look at the composer.json. Hey, look, there's a repository right here. Okay, I'm going to cut that out, and I'm going to go over here to my status or status. I keep on wanting to call it status. That's that's wrong. And I'm going to put it here. Forgive the really crappy. Um, it's really hard to do a technical demo while everybody is watching you type. Okay, so I've got this uh, VCS in there. I'm going to fix it. So we've got that. Now I'm going to go in here and do a composer build. Okay, so see that was really fast. Scanning all the packages, it packet, you know, it, it created this. Wrote wrote the packages. It wrote that file. Ta-da! Wrote packages.json. All right. So I I took this I took this uh the little the repository out over here. But if I was to build this right now. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to create a uh, uh, a new new terminal, and I'm going to go to karaoke redneck.com and I'm going to do a composer install, or let's do a composer update. Let's see what happens here. All right, it could not find. Drupal OpenKJ. Well, duh. I took the I took the uh, repository out. But if I go and go in here and I look at my uh, at my status, I created one over here in in this. Well, I need it to be web accessible, so to speak. You know, because um, I I got to put a web address in in that in the repositories. I want to create something that looks like this. Composer, blah blah blah, some URL. Okay, so the easy way to do that. Hey, look, we have Lando over here. Let's uh, let's go back over here to my other terminal and do uh, Lando start. This cheeky Lando. Let's get this party started. So I'm starting gr packages. If y'all didn't know it, didn't, if you don't remember what my Lando configuration looks like, that's exciting. It's not a whole lot there. All I needed was a web server to sh to be able to host the JSON files because you can't do it. You know, you can't just view the. It's really hard to curl your local machine if you don't have, <laughs> you know, a web server showing it. So I just did something really quick. So here I've got my, I've got my uh, my URL. I'm going to go ahead and copy that, um, and I'm going to go over here and put this in. So I need. 
uh, type is composer URL is Lando there we go all right so now that now in theory what happens now I go here run my composer update hey look at that I have a little bit of, a little bit of problem certificate you know Lando you always have that little issue now if we would have looked at my presentation I said over here um, that it's that you really need to put a uh, where is it I need to put a I guess I guess I didn't uh, I didn't put it in my presentation. I put it in my blog post. I need to put a little uh, configuration in here really quick to do something insecure while I'm testing. So it is even in the it's even in the config thing. I'm going to go. Hey, look! It's supposed to be there. Secure HTTP is false. What's up there? It says problem. Unable to get the lo local issuers. Hey, let's let's try. Doing this real quick. Let's put it on HTTP TTP and see if it does. Okay, there we go. That's that's my that's my challenge. I need HTTP, not HTTPS. And that's that's what the insecure HTTP um, protocol thing works. Okay, so look, it downloaded. I'm updating. It's almost happy. We got slow conference internet. And ta-da! Okay. Tested my custom packages. You might want to, you're like, well, well, wonder what that, you know, you just showed me a bunch of, uh, you know, command line stuff. What, 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 what's going on there? Well, let's go take a look at it. Here's my packages. It's got all these packages in it. And it's got the new one I added right down there at the bottom. So you, this is a static site generator. It created index.html uh, for me, and it says, oh, it was last updated five minutes ago, so on and so forth. And it tells you, okay, this is how you install it. Y'all overwhelmed yet? No? Okay. I finally realized what the status is. It took me until you showed that mm -hmm. page to realize what status was created. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. I'm sorry. Uh, that's a. It, it's a. It just creates some uh, HTML file and some JSON files, and it's creating a pack. A package just literally is JSON files. Yeah. When you look at it in the grand scheme of things, it's showing you all. If you ever go look at a raw package dot JSON, which I mean, it's got a bigger file name than that. It's all. It's every single version. With all the URLs to all the different commits of every you know every single version of a certain package, and that's what we just did. We created that. I can go in there and we can go in there and look at you know the JSON file and it'll it'll show you that. But the 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 gist of it is this is a good good representation of it. So I've only got one version of this one, which is Dev 8.1.x. We have all these releases of all these different manual ones that I put in there they're just standard package but then I don't have to go if I want to update one of these all I have to do is is uh, make sure that my version number is will accept it in each one of the composer.json that are downstream just like you would if you're doing like security updates if you want to do security updates for a Drupal 9 you don't you don't typically pin pin your Drupal slash core package right so if I made sure that Drupal library Blazy was like 1.8 tilde you know, tilde 1.8.0 or something like that, then if I change it to 1.8.3, it update with just composer update. So I can change it here and not have to go change it in every single composer.json file because um, I had to manually put that in each one of the repository sections. That's the benefit. Okay, that's the main benefit. It's my time I'm getting back with this solution. And then most of this I'm sending you through only happens once, you know, and sometimes once in a blue moon. So then, yeah, great. So I, I put words in your mouth. 
Yeah, you, now you see a packet, just now what? This is your cue. <laughs> Let's talk about hosting. <laughs> Let's talk about hosting. Because I all I have right now is a Lando instance and who's gonna connect to General Redneck's machine and to get the packages? I'm not gonna let them. <laughs> no, my Lando doesn't uh, isn't out to the public. No, sir. So what do we, what are our solutions? Well we have JSON files, so any of these will work. Um, we use an S3 bucket on my client's implementation. I got creative. Why not use GitHub pages? Isn't it made for static sites? You know, it might be a good solution for if you didn't care if people saw what was in your packages and you had, or you wanted to share like a whole bunch of these like Drupal libraries or something amongst your organization. Well, I could really see a four kitchens dot get io dot uh, github dot io slash packages as a packages so that we can maintain all of those and then, you know, then we don't have to do it in every single one of our clients freaking, you know, repos section. So I was like, okay, let's do that. So we, we, we're going to have a uh, general redneck dot github.io slash packages. So what did we do to do that? Any of y'all ever made a GitHub pages page before? Yeah. It's really, it's really, really, really simple. You create a, I have a, I'll, this is one of the links I'll share. Um, and that's a, here's a quick start for it. First, you create a repository and you name it after the user and you add .github.io. You're done, pretty much. Start pushing stuff up to it and then it comes up. So, like for instance, my very first push was this index.html file. And this index.html file, hey there. You know, I, I wanted to keep that space open just in case, you know, I decide I want to do something else, but still maintain, you know, my packages. So I'm going to, I'm going to put my packages in the slash packages folder for that, you know, because what if, you know, I have some pressing documentation about how to get my John Deere 790 running again that I want to put there on the homepage. I just, I just can't give up that real estate, you know. So let's do that. Okay. I so I did my I did my generation earlier. I did the the build right. You see this packages folder. It's got an include. It has an include right here with a JSON. I am going to take that and I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to go here and I'm going to create an, another instance of a terminal so I'm in here so I'm going to go to general redneck dot get uh, IO get status okay look I got my packages folder there get uh, packages get commit am uh, initial commit okay something like so okay now I'm going to get push origin main Man, I went all cowboy on that. <clears throat> Developers do not commit to main willy-nilly. That's my PSA. Okay. So I come over here and look at my willy-nilly commit. I have packages. Now it takes a minute, but we'll give it Give it, give that a minute while it's going. If they also say, go in here and check. It says your your site is ready to be published. It'll say when it is published here in a minute. We can sit here and refresh and and, and make it annoying for it and make it take longer because they have some kind of algorithm in there that says once you hit the refresh five times, we're going to take an hour to make this page post up. Okay, hey look. I didn't refresh quick enough, and ta-da. We have a packages that's remote now. So what do I do? I go here to my karaoke site. 
I'm done testing this package. So part of the workflow would be I go I go here, create my my status uh, JSON, and I do and I made a change here. So in, in in theory, I would look at I would go here and look at this, um, and then do a pull request with this change in it. Um, I'm gonna go cowboy and you know commit this to main now. Turn the other way. So this this would be part of my workflow. This is this I would I would do a pull request, have them make sure they tested it locally with their Lando instance, make sure that it worked, do the pull request. I might test it myself, um, and then we will merge it once everything's good. Okay. That that's kind of way that's kind of way we would we would uh, um, uh, work work this out. So I'm going to push this up. Git push origin main, and you know I know that he's sitting over there thinking, man, this could there's some automation that's got to happen here because this is totally this is bumming me out. You just pushed up to main, and then you you actually even went and pushed up to your GitHub pages before you push this one up to main. So that's like the worst of snafu of hot fix or something. That There's something wrong here. Um, so it, we'll get to that here in a little bit. But notice I, I now have a I now have a uh, um, I can now do this. Uh, HTTPS general redneck at dot GitHub uh, I O slash packages. Okay, we have a few minutes. We need to speed it up a bit. Okay, so I've done that. I need to go to my karaoke site because uh, I'm working on that now. And I do a composer update. But this would be like through the automation or something like uh, you know, on it whenever I'm doing the actual feature at this point instead of testing it. So notice that everything everything happened just fine off the off the GitHub pages implementation. We've we've got a public published packages. That's that's the gist. Okay. Yeah, like I was saying, you, you just saw me copy and paste and do some Git magic. And uh, now, I what I could have showed you right now is if I made a new branch over there on OpenKJ, it was it wouldn't show up on that. I'd have to go manually go to my Lando instance, do another build, and then then go and push it up, and then I'd get that. So it can use some automation. Let's talk about this for a second. What I'm suggesting is a free GitHub Actions or a free Circle CI. I did a Circle CI implementation, and it's really it's it's a little bit more advanced than your standard Circle CI. How many of you know about pipeline parameters? It's uh, it's their idea of variables that can be injected into the workflow. Not not just a job. Like you can use environment variables to get custom stuff into a job. But what if you wanted uh, wanted a, a uh, wanted a uh, let's say you wanted to initiate a job via an API call? This is when you would use pipeline parameters. And in fact, it's the only way you can in Circle CI. I don't know what the implementation for something like that is like in. Um, in uh, uh, GitHub Actions, I haven't went that far. So, anybody else want to do a presentation on that? I'll join it. I promise you. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have our SADIS implementation have its build in an automated workflow. Okay. So I've been running Composer build. We're going to make that happen on change on commit. Okay. And then we're going to do a, 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 a deploy script real quick. My deploy looks like this. Um, 
you saw me copy and paste and then git commit, right? I abstracted it out a little bit. Okay, I have my git my git um, my git pages repo. Uh, my and I abstract out the directory. You can change it, and then I have uh, a couple of other supporting things. So here's my git pages repo. I check out main. I remove the packages that are already there. I get the stuff from Satis, or and then I copy it into the pack the packages directory in the repo. And then I commit it, and then I push to origin. <laughs> that was all those things I did manually, right? So we script it. Now in my in my uh, let's go forward. I did this in a little bit. In my stat in my state status repo, I'm going to have a couple of things happen here. I want I need composer. I need um, yeah I need composer. So I'm going to use the PHP orb. And circle CI to get composer, get get the latest version on a, and I'm going to use the PHP orb to get the environment, so I can define the version of PHP really quickly, um, and without having to go and mess around with uh, with uh, Docker image versions and stuff. And with with uh, Circle CI, they use the there's some there's some speed benefits for using orbs um, because of their caching layer. So I've done that. And so there's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind. We need a GitHub token because we're doing we're doing a composer. Um, in in this case, we're doing a composer install. So if we want something private, we need a token to be able to do that. I had that on my local machine. Circle doesn't have that, so I need a GitHub token. And then the other thing is, is I need an SSH key because I'm going to be committing to my pages. Uh, repository, right? So the bot user that I'm using has an SSH key over there. And I'll show you that here in a second. Now on OpenKJ, my module, I throw in this configuration in there. And that is it does just a quick curl, which in GitHub Actions is really, really easy to do. But this is why I needed the pipeline parameters and the other one is so that I could say, okay, uh, when it, I have to give it a state of when to run the workflow. And that's a circle CI-ism. Um, and I need a circle token to run an API call. So there's some configuration here. That all said, whenever you come back to this later and I share you the links to how to get into these various repos, there's a whole readme here dedicated about everything we've gone through today and how to do it. Circle CI uh, token, you can get that on Google. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to let, don't let me Google that for you. That's why I'm going to <laughs> just I'm let you know that you can get that, get that information on Google. And then over here on, circles, uh, on Circle CI's configuration, I can quickly um, look, at a, look at the changes here. So I'm going to go over here and get my Circle CI stuff really quick. So my so I'm going to get check out Circle CI. We can look at at the changes here. Let me see. I'm going to make a quick change to my status here. Um, I'm going to pull in main. Get pull origin main. Get push origin circle CI, and circle CI has the circle CI stuff that I need to run. Um, the thing I just showed you, basically, you know, it, I say basically, it's exactly what I showed you. Notice it's working. It created the packages. We can go over here, look at the artifacts really quick, see what bit what was made. We can go over here to um, to GitHub. It's a uh, GitHub pages, and it says your site is ready to publish. So we can come look, and you'll notice that um, that the change was deploy bot just made it. Okay, so now anytime I make changes to status dot JSON, I get I get changes here. The next trick is anytime I make changes to OpenKJ, I want to make sure that the new version is available here too. So with that said, 
I quickly go over here, add this circle ci.config.yaml that I showed you. Er, uh, that's not, that's, that's karaoke. Give me a second. Open KJ, my customized module. Add that curl request there. I'm going to go ahead and open this, make a quick change to the readme, and then push it up, and we can we can see the change there. Stupid change. There we go. And then I'm going to push that CD and get commit am stupid change. And this is forever going into the get history for this module. It's just, See, this, if you went to the, if y'all missed the demystifying Git um, lecture because you came to this one, don't worry, I'm, I'm doing some of that right now. Um. <laughs> okay. And it's really fun to watch other people work too because you're like, I, you can do that faster, you know that, right? You know, it's like. <laughs> Why'd you run all that command? Why you have to be so verbose? Okay, where are you, Circle CI? Okay, I can go here, Circle CI, and I'm going to go to all pipelines, and you'll see that OpenKJ Drupal integration is running. So it's building the little container, do the curl. This is where I was talking about. Do you need instant gratification? Because you're not going to get it between GitHub pages and. Circle CI taking forever to decide that I'm next on the queue. Okay. To run a curl job. <laughs> um, so you kind of get the idea. Here in a second, you'll see that this runs, uh, this will run, and then it'll, it'll actually fire off the saddest job on the next one. Um, and then it'll then uh, your packages will be updated. And that's pretty much, that's the gist of the automation portion. And I'll let y'all read that and consume it for a second. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. But, you know, if you have the tools that are necessary and the means and there's a situation where you need to make it kind of reinvent the wheel, so to speak, for a packages, this is a good way to go, particularly if you are behind in a closed, you know, a closed system. Um, you can even, like, and you were telling me about this in a minute ago, using something like, hell, you could use squid or something that's up there and, like, suck it all in, you know? Um, there's, there's, there's some possibilities. Oh, I got an email that failed. We're not even going to look at that. Just pretend everything went okay. You know? <laughs> and then, do you want to do anything like this? You can work with me. I'm hiring. I'm just saying. Um, be a web chef. Come work with us. Do work, uh, do work that's worth doing with people like you and me. Um, we're humbly confident and we're endlessly curious how you think this solution happened. But we, we try to be genuinely kind to one another and we love to work together. So give that URL a click. If y'all have any questions, I'll be here all night. So.